Now we told you about One West, 125th Street, Harlem, New York. No. That's where the SUV started in 1969. I'm Harry Robinson, and I'm curious. Curious about the different beliefs, interesting individuals, and eclectic groups of people that populate our planet. That's why I'm in the US, spending time with a religious fringe group currently listed as a hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center, sticking out amongst the countless white supremacist factions that dominate the listings. I'm here to be curious and to find out what it takes for faith to become hate. On the buckle of the Bible Belt of the United States lies the Oklahoman branch of the ISUPK, a Zionist Israelite group that believes that African Americans are one of the lost tribes of Israel and whose means of preaching stand out in the overwhelmingly white Christian state. Hold on, you think we're on the bottom because we want to be on the bottom? When the Most High is telling us we're a special people, we ought to be separated from these devils and dogs, Edomites. The group operate nationally and have had their fair share of bad press. So with me happy to play by their rules, the Oklahoma Israelite School insisted I met them at a children's park so I could find out more about their beliefs and reputation. How you doing, man? Uh -huh. Hey, check this out. Before yeah. we can do this, yeah. uh, let me, can I, can I yeah. pat you down? Put it on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in my, it's, it's order, how be you do things, you know what I'm saying? So, and everything's good. It's for our safety and your safety. It's always a threat to, you know, for us. But it's like, in the Bible, the Lord was always with the prophets. You know what I'm saying? But in the Bible, people were against the prophets. The prophets did die. Talk to me a bit about um, what the ISUPK uh, is to you then. It's all, it's all about being, being, being black, being an Israelite, knowing who you are, knowing what's your duty, you know, to do as a priest and a prophet of the Lord, and loving your people. Because man, I'm telling you, like, like being, my father was a pastor. And what, what, I, for what religion? Um, I'm just Christian, mm -hmm. Christian pastor, you know, Baptist. In society, in the in, in the regular society, in the world or in the world, I would have been like a dude that I didn't commit no crimes. I didn't commit no crimes, you know. When I was a boxer, and you know, then I, what after I finished boxing, I stopped being a personal trainer and everything, you know. So I wasn't a person that in committing any crimes or anything, but I was committing crimes against the Most High. I was in the world like, hey, everybody, people used to tell me how good I was. They said, it's a good dude, man. He don't, you know, he don't hustle drugs. He don't do nothing. Just, you know, I was a good dude in their sight. But unto the most high sight, I was evil. I was whoring out women, you know, eating crab shrimp and lobster, celebrating holidays. All that stuff is sin. The ISUPK's overt and confrontational manner of calling out the oppression of minorities, equipped with their warlike attire, reminded me of the Black Panther Party. They too were categorised as hateful by officials, though one stark difference rung in my mind which separates the ISUPK from a group that was crucial in the civil rights movement. The ISUPK's religious tinge on racial politics is the barbed thorns of the group's rhetoric. Despite understandably wanting justice, the intolerance rooted in religious beliefs is the main reason the ISUPK has its hate group status, with the SPL Centre even reclassifying the group to show this. Could the religious aspect be the real problem here rather than the group's racial politics? Is it outrageous in itself that I drew comparisons to the Black Panthers? Did you have a, a worldly name or is that a, would you class you before the ISUPK as a Well we just call it, we just say a slave name. The slave. name I still use is slave name. What was your slave name? You know? Well, I'd rather not tell you. I'd rather not say it on camera. You know? You know what I'm saying? And But what it is, it's a common name, you know? Mm -hmm. But you know what I'm saying? But it's like, I'm not that person no more. I'm not that person no more. Now, man, I'm your God, walk your house. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel that, that in a in almost a metaphorical sense, that person with the slave name who was a boxer mm -hmm. is dead now and this is a new life, kind of? No, you know what I'm saying? He, yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. You know, he's dead. You know, because I don't do the, I don't even think the same way. So the, the thing that led, led me on to this kind of documentary and this um, 
journey to, to learn about the ISUPK was the fact that the mm -hmm. ISUPK is listed on the Southern Poverty Law Centre as a hate group. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I have spoken in, in my past to, to previous hate groups. Yeah. And you mentioned before about, about white supremacy and I've spoken mm -hmm. to white supremacist groups. Yeah. Why do you think that you are put on par with groups that are laden with swastikas and, and have committed well, we, well, crimes? Well, one thing, because we, we regard we the priests and prophets of the Most High. You know what I'm saying? We have, I'm saying, the truth can't come out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because why? that's what the, the white man's, what, that's his, his kingdom, that's the fall of his kingdom, what I'm trying to say. Once the truth comes out and people start obeying the Most High, then Christ is going to come. We can't get caught up with what people are saying bad about us. We got to go in there with give this, um, <clears throat> give the truth to our people and wake them up. Because that's our job. And they, the people are going to say the most evilest things about us. We can't go in there. <laughs> we can't even listen to that. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And all the good we do, they're going to try to shed, put some evil on it. We feed people. Mm -hmm. Well, if you feed the poor, we do all the things in the Bible. Where what Christ said, when you actually, <laughs> when I was poor, did you feed me and stuff like that? Like we have food drives, clothing drives, where we yeah. give our sisters pampers for the newborn babies and babies. Yeah. And if we was a hate group, would we feed white people? Would we feed other nations? Did you know the ICBK feed them too? Yeah. Like we don't deny anybody that comes to our food drives. Like they call us a hate group because we love our own. The government don't love us. <laughs> I mean, uh, one, one thing I've seen from a lot of the, the preaching videos that, that um, you put out on, on YouTube is um, getting white people to essentially kiss your boots. You know, you know something? That's, that, 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 that's, that's something heavy that really is happening when, when, when the, you see white people kiss our boots. Now, you said we get white people to kiss their boots. We don't get them to kiss their boots. It's prophesied in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And this to and they they are the, the the spirit of the most high is making them get down and kiss the boot because it's really wise, but it's only righteous. Now if I read this scripture <laughs> for you to do this act just because of you who you are and because of your forefathers and to show us that you're different, would you be willing to do what the scripture said do? Kiss the boots. Well, let's get yeah. it. Let's get I, it. I, I feel that if I'm coming as a journalist, as soon as I, as I get on the floor and, and kiss the boots, it might sway the balance of trying to stay neutral. I mean, this is beyond the journalist and beyond the interviewee. This is mm. for so humility for what your people did to my people. I, Just to see what kind of person you are, to see if you're different from your forefathers. How does... I, and I 100% understand the gesture, but mm. if I I'm, I'm show, if I show you with my words and, and how I portray myself that I completely disagree with that side of it, why does it make it any different that I have to... Because let me speak? tell you with the words. Okay, see, so yeah, I understand where you, the stance, where you mm. are right now. Right now, you just, you're, you're a journalist right now. Mm. And like you said, it, you got to be neutral. <laughs> Can someone be... Um, black or true Jewish in mind, or is it, does it have to go to ancestry? You, you, ain't no such thing as a spiritual <laughs> yeah, Israelite. Yeah, that's, it wasn't no that's, spiritual that's, Israelites that's, on them slave ships getting their back beat with the whip, yeah. getting their babies ripped out of their pregnant women bosom and just throwing the alligators yeah. and used them as alligator bait. Mm -hmm. That wasn't spiritual, that really happened to a people. The Southern Poverty Law Center they don't have the so-called Jewish, no, so, the so-called Jewish men in their uh, list as a hate group, do they? Because they feel like everybody else is goyim. They call them goyim, mm -hmm. and they feel like right. they're the uh, chosen race. Yeah. But nobody ever comes after them, even though the Bible speaks totally against them being Jews. That's why they call themselves Jewish. Yeah. If I had on a shirt that looks black, but it's not black, I'm gonna say it's blackish. They know they're not the real Jews. That's why they call themselves yeah, yeah. Jewish. And Jewish is a religion. It's not a nationality. A Jew is a nationality. Israelite is a nationality. I mean, for the, the to say a Jewish man is a Jew, that's, a, I mean, like I said, it's a crime of the century. And like you said, if I could piggyback on what you said, they mm -hmm. have to, 
they run the media. They yeah. have to uh, keep us in the dark. Exactly. That's why you the only Jewish see negative. And white people. That's why you only see negative things about us in the media. Yeah. That's why we consider the hate group. Who, who runs the, which group runs the media? The oppressor runs the media with, I believe, the majority is uh, the Jewish men. Mm -hmm. They run it. What's quite funny, it depends how you see it. I So a, a couple of months ago, I interviewed a a, um, a neo-Nazi who was mm. who's also on the group of the, the yeah. of the SPL Center. Like, mm. And he said the same thing about Jewish people. The Jew, the Jew, the Jew. Every time I turned around, it was something to do with Jews. True. I kept on seeing all these Jewish names that I'd never even given a second thought to before that were coming up in the media and Hollywood and everywhere else. What I think about how he feel about it? That, that, you, that you're essentially on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, yet you agree that Jewish people control the media and oppress groups of people. Because it's true. Truth it's is true. true, no matter who yeah. tell it. They want an explanation that it's not just that they're that either they're not they're not working hard enough or they're not doing this or not doing that, but the cards are stacked against them <laughs> uh, because someone out there, a boogeyman, is causing it. Now, the most reliable boogeyman, right, is Jewish people. So the so-called white man that considers himself a Jew, his history don't match up with the Bible. According to them, uh, Jewish people made slave ships to help enslave black people. Um, Jewish people, though, not Jews. <laughs> no, because the Jewish people made the slave ships for the Jews. Raven Hodges is somewhat of an expert on the ISUPK and an analyst for the Southern Poverty Law Center, the organization responsible for classifying the ISUPK as a hate group. I do not have the level of security that I would like to have. Raven wished not to be on camera. This organization was founded on an ideology that was previously meant to be about integration. Uh, one of the founders of this organization, of not this organization, but of this ideology in particular, Hebrew Israelite ideology, was named William Sanders Crawley. He was a big proponent of integration. And a lot of the tactics he used to get people on board um, are very similar to the street pre preaching that they use. The white man is the devil that the Bible speaks of, and it feels good to tell him that. That's right! But overall, you know, this is obviously a group that is like splintered off. This could not be farther from the original vision. The whole crux of their argument is that they're the true Jews. They're the chosen people, right? God don't love everybody. He wants you to be separate from everybody. Right. And I'm sure you've heard that argument from white supremacists. We're the chosen people. We're the ones that are supposed to have domination. Whilst I was at the park, I was asked if I would essentially bend the knee, get down on all fours and kiss the boots of Ayash Kavalod, who is the, the camp leader for Oklahoma. I abstained because of journalistic integrity. Could you explain to me the kind of reasonings for that and I mean, especially why they, they pick people very clearly down on their look yeah. to try and kiss their boots. They want to look strong. Absolutely. Sorry, because you just told everybody out here looking that you're sorry. Right. So the Bible says you have to do this. I'm sure to them it feels very validating. They definitely do it. It definitely helps like support their claim that they're the chosen people, um, that even white people know that they're bad. And the worst part is even after people do kiss the boot, they still talk to him like a dog. This is a small gesture right here. Right. What he's done is a small gesture. It don't bring back our grandmothers that they killed and lynched and hung from trees. I've noticed a lot of times that people with a lot of white guilt who don't know how to channel it properly will do it, right? They'll be like, I agree, that's bad. Yeah, white people are bad, yeah. You'll hear a lot of people say stuff like that. It's not actually fixing anything. I can understand why they're mad at white people, right? but I don't think it's any excuse for them to be hurting their own community. One of the worst uh, videos I think I watched, they were having a class and one of the members started talking about a sister, uh, another black woman, um, who wanted to join ISUPK, but she had a mixed son. He basically told the woman that she could not join unless she gave up her son for adoption. Right, sister, what you need to do is, you might need to try and take that child that you got and put, you know, kind of nudge him to be with them, with his people. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. You're trying to, you forcing this child up on us. We don't accept it. All of a sudden, you don't want to be in the school. You go ahead and you take that child. That's not one of ours. Get him to them. (laughs) Give him up to for adoption. You can't sit there and separate a mother and their child. You can't. And then go on and say that you you love your community. They want to call us a hate group because we love our own. World War Three is coming. Right. That's right. The thermal nuclear destruction is coming on this earth. That's right. That's right. We've been sitting out here to wake our people up to let them know, hey, you got to choose a side. If you're going to die or you want to live. Right. Right. I found myself conflicted. The ISUPK's controversial views are undoubtedly hateful. However, the systematic mistreatment of minority ethnic groups earned the malevolent sympathy that white supremacists besmirched with swastika tattoos could never allow. Does that sympathy even matter, though? Can you ever even consider rationalizing hate speech? The Sabbath day preaching in Oklahoma City was my final destination, and hopefully where I might be able to find some answers to questions that had made me feel uncomfortable. So they stand in camp. So what we do is we come out, see, like we're getting things ready, and we're getting things ready because we're going to start to speak. We're going to start to speak. See, like, and the Bible says, cry loud and spare not. You know, so we come out here and we're going to set up, get everything ready, and then when, we, when we're ready to speak, we're just going to start speaking. So we don't come and try to draw a crowd, you know, or maybe wait for the crowd to come. Because, you know, not even trying to, like, I would say, recruiting people. It's just that a person could be, like, 80 years old. They never heard the truth of the Bible. My parents have died. My parents died without ever, ever hearing the truth. You know, and my parents weren't Christian. You know, so they died, like, not really knowing the truth of the Bible. You know, and so be that, to me, I mean, that's a crime. <laughs> they... Apologies, it's a personal no question. But if uh, did they die before you joined the ISPK or? Yes. yes. No, 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 yeah. Before, before, before I joined. you joined, yes. Before I joined, they died. Do you feel that if they were still around, they would be a part, de facto members of the ISPK? Um, I really don't know. That's something that I really don't know. You know I don't know how they would have took the trip, you know? I like to say my father was a person that, you know, he wasn't really like a religious person. You know, but he was believing in the most high. You know, and like I said, he was a pastor. You know, but he wasn't that really type of pastor that got down went to church and church and church and stuff like that, you know. So and my mother wasn't either. You know, they wasn't like really like you could say that religious type of person, you know. You know, but they just believe in the most high and you know, they didn't understand how like I said, they didn't understand the truth of the Bible. So in that way, you fear the Most High. You say you fear the Most High, but you really don't because of the things that you do. So had they known the truth of the Bible, they would have known to fear the Most High. You know, we don't want to be loved. We want to be feared. You know. I, I spoke to someone from the SPL Center, and basically they yes. said that the ISUPK, their quote from their mouth was that the ISUPK play upon white guilt to make people kiss the the boots of people. What do you think about that? (laughs) That's terrible. That's terrible. I mean, it's like, it's not like we playing this. They, the the scriptures say, um, shame shall cover you. That's what the Bible says. That's in the Bible. I'm telling them that um, shame is going to cover on white people for what they've done to us in the past. What the rights of white race done to blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, shame is covering them. That's why you have a lot of liberals. We have liberals right now, they come, oh yeah, they want to fight for black people. They want to fight for Hispanic people, you know, and they want to fight for Native Indian people. They want to do this, you know. That's not really their spirit. A lot of times, like, it's the, they can, they can see the um, America fall. The George Floyd um, murder. They want to, white people want to stand up for George Floyd. It was unrighteous. It wasn't right what they did to George Floyd, which it really wasn't. You know, I mean, any human <laughs> would, would know that it wasn't right to sit on the guy's neck till he dies. I'm done singing and dancing. My granddaddy sung and dancing. and marched. Marching is over. Ain't no devil gonna come in my community and murder one of my brothers again, man. I'm tired of my brothers getting murdered in our communities, man. I'm tired of it, brothers and sisters. It's over with for that. It's over with for singing and marching. Ain't no peace coming. Ain't no 
protest is coming. So everybody right. knows that's not right. But it's a, like what's going on, those things, people are going to see what, oh, wait a minute. And it's coming back to the Astro UK. Those those evil black men that stood on the corner, the black and Hispanic brothers who stood on the corner, who said the white man is the devil the Bible speaks of. Now they saw, wait, wait, wait a minute. The devil means deceiver. That devil doesn't mean the, the man with horns and a pitchfork. The devil just means deceiver. We've been destroyed for the lack of knowledge. We destroyed, we destroyed because we wanna, we want equality. We wanna join so bad. Join so bad, that spirit of Martin Luther King. Now, then I gotta ask you, what do you think about Martin Luther King? I mean, I, I think he was good for black people? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes I do. Okay, all right, that, that, that's an honest answer. That's an honest answer. Being, like I said, Martin Luther King was terrible for black people. You gotta understand. Check, Martin Luther King was a traitor for black people. Why was he a traitor? Huh? Because he joined us check, with check, the check, people check, who check. were killing us. The passionate preaching on the speakers, which echoed a lot of the sentiments that I'd heard before, drowned out my conversation with the captain. So I decided to gauge the reactions of my fellow audience members and how the group aimed to spread their message. Those, those flying objects that you call UFOs, those are the chairs of the most high. Here's the truth. I can log on to Facebook right now. I can log on to YouTube, Instagram, whatever people are using today on social media. And I can watch black and brown people die and live in color. And you know what? That's what my children get to watch. They get to watch a man lay down on the ground with another man with his knee in his neck until he dies, begging for his life, begging for his mother. Well, I don't want to die, but if I have to die, I don't want it to be on my knees. And if my children have to watch it, I want, them, I want to die standing up. And I want them to know that their father was a soldier, so at least they can live with that memory. That I didn't die like an animal on the ground, being treated as a second-class citizen. Leave, I can tell you, leave a, even your people live a much better life than oppressed people in Argentina, that's for sure. Let me ask you, um, if, if my people were enslaved here, and they were forced to work here for free to build this country, should they not partake in living, in living at the same level, or at least a better life? No, where I'm going, where I'm trying to go with this is that I don't know where it was going with that, but... But the Bible says that he's going to put vengeance in the hands of those who have been oppressed. Give me Revelation, chapter the, 13, I, verse I 9. The problem with that is that it could be a never-ending cycle. Like, action, reaction, reaction, reaction is like, when it does it end? Like, Well, according to the scriptures, when the Israelites come into power, it's a perpetual kingdom. And it's, how come you stop to talk to me? I just saw him and was curious about what they're saying, and that's it. And Where are you from? Uh, we're from Argentina. Do you think they seem hateful? Uh, yeah, it didn't seem very reconciliation prone. Like, more on, yeah. Yeah, they don't talk about vengeance or revenge, but it they sounds are like saying it. <laughs> that. They call us a hate group. Right. How in the world are we a hate group when we talk about loving our people? Right. It's very stiff. There is no room for discussion or because things are like this and that's it because there is the no way around says. it because the bible says and so starting from there i don't like that because there is no discussion so okay there is why are you telling me this either i agree with you or we fight because we cannot talk about it because there is no room for doubt right. we don't lie steal and kill we don't do that we're not a hate group we're not like your neo-nazis right. we're not right. like the Klux Klan. Right. the pastor coming to town we're none of that we are the children of Israel. We're not the, the Arabs. We don't have to strap bombs to ourselves and run in the buildings. Right, right. We got the real power, the power of Israel, the only God. Because they speak about you, your first impressions of the of the oh, Okay, first impressions? I agree, Jesus was not Caucasian and he was not blue-eyed. There's no way he could be. So I I, I get that. But I've not I've not heard you know this. This is interesting to me. I would have to read more information and read scripture because I do believe the Bible is God's word. And I do believe we can base our life off the scriptures. So and I always believe there is we can never know it all. If he was a Caucasian hiding in Egypt 
it'd have been like a white rice in a bowl of black beans. <laughs> they would have found them that fast. So, I like that. So if your bloodline go back to one of these, you could be an Israelite. Wow. Okay. You think she is an Israelite? Like I said, if her bloodline trace back to one of these, uh, she could I am, be. I am a eighth Blackfoot Indian. On what side? Your mother's side? My father's, my father's mother was raised. Your father's mother. See, we, we go by the pedigree of your father. Okay. So you are what your father is. If I plant an apple seed, I'm not going to get an orange tree. I'm going to get an apple. If I, if I plant a whatever the father of man carries the seed. Seed meaning sperm. So if, if I, like I said, if I plant an apple seed, I'm not going to get a banana. What was his problem? He was a Nazi. With the ISUPK seemingly making inroads with the unlikeliest of audience members, their sacred Sabbath day ground to a halt following some complaints from nearby businesses. I'm a representative of the property management company that owns this property from Reno to the interstate from uh, the railroad track to Tops Grove belongs to a corporation that's private property. I've been, asked, I've been asked just to ask you to leave. Okay, okay we'll talk to the, the board over here. They said we have the right to come today. Uh, here like it's around 12. Okay, here, I'm going to give you some phone number, okay? So, right to the uh, press that you go ahead and leave, contact them if you want to be able to come back. They do it. I, I can't tell you what their rules or regulations are or anything else. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Let them know to wrap it up. And he shall put Property, so people everything. complain that essentially. Yeah, well, no, anybody. I I run off. I I ask people to leave all the time. It's not just it's not just this, these gentlemen. It's it's um, and normally I have a pamphlet that I give them and gives them instructions on who to contact. And usually what they try to do is get them to go down to the sonic stage. But he told me that we was free to speak here as long as we're not over 12 people. I can I can give you a call and give you his information okay. as well. Call, call them, okay? Okay. I mean, it's came into them and they live. With the Hebrew Israelites shooed from their soapbox showing the gray area regarding the morality and freedom of true free speech. I found my time with the ASUPK drawing to an abrupt close. This was my best window into a racial members club to which I didn't have a pass for, and it was ironically shut down by a polite white man. With the window left open a crack, I pulled Captain Yuga up for one final chat. So I spoke to the SPL Centre. One of the main things that they said was basically that if a black woman has had a child with a white man, if they wanted to join the ICPK, they have to abandon the child. And I wanted to see if that was yeah, true. And, and abandon the child. <laughs> the kid is a white kid. So would she would she have to abandon the child if she wants not to Not abandon, to that's the child. Not abandon, it's like the, that child can't come into our temples. So says the Bible. Like we tell brothers all the time they have a white wife. She can't come in. They said the ISUPK's uh, attitudes towards transgender people was a big factor. What makes ISUPK on level with fascist groups and that kind of stuff? What are your, your views on, on transgender people? Right? Either, either way, it's wrong. It's wrong. It's a sin. It's a sin. We tell our people not to be transgender. <laughs> so it's like, as far as like being against them, that's like any, any homosexual. We feel a homosexual is wrong. We would tell the black, Hispanic, and Native Indian, we would say, hey, you need to fall out of that lifestyle. We don't beat them or we don't, or what they call bashing. We don't do that type of stuff. We don't harm them at all. We may harm them by words, but I'm out of the Bible. We don't call them names. We don't call them, you know what I'm saying? You don't see us sitting there call, hey, you're a faggot, you're this and that. No, we don't do that. What we do, we go in the Bible and tell them where they're wrong. The Bible says, show Israel their sins. So we show them their sins. Like I said, if, Christ, if Christians say they're against it, they're not called a hate group. Like if a pastor speaks against the LBT, whatever, all them alphabets, I really don't pay attention to it. But if the pastor say he's against it, they won't look at that pastor and say, oh, he's a hate group. That's a hate pastor. He's preaching hate. They won't say that. But us, oh, we a hate group. It is.
it's a double standard. Of course it's a double standard. You know, we we wouldn't be in America if it wasn't a double standard. You know, and plus, I wouldn't say America. I was all over the planet. What's wrong? What do God say is abomination? It says homosexuality is abomination. That's what the Bible says. I mean, come on, the Bible's been out so many thousands of years. Why isn't the preacher teaching this? Could mm -hmm. you say that because it's been out so many thousands of years that maybe certain things like that, like how the Pope has said in, in regarding Christianity, that maybe those teachings should be updated well, to, the for Pope a modern is, audience? The Pope is a homosexual. So the Pope is a homosexual. I mean, coming to the Catholic Church? I mean, are you kidding me? You know, Days in heaven. That means there's going to be a lot of killing. This right. world is going to be based It's crazy heaven. because they always are like, oh, we got this hatred against white people. I mean, we got this and that, and they trying to, you know, they trying to stop us because we're spreading racism and hatred. You talking to a man that I got stopped on the side of the road in Memphis, Tennessee, through about two white cops, and they had blood in their eye. First, he drove up behind me. I'm driving across country, nowhere me and my wife. He drove up and flashed a flashlight in my window, like he trying to see who's in there. Then he drifted back behind me and pulled me over. I'm going to my door, said, well, I reason I stopped you because you was too close um, to the car in front of you. The truck was like, wait, the truck was like two, two car lengths in front of me. So I knew, I knew it was up, you know, told me to get our car and everything. And then he tried to go in front with my wife to really set me off, you know, told me to stand back here with this other cop. You know, this goes on with a black man. I'm on a dark highway with two racist white cops. So I got pulled over with those two killer cops out of Memphis, Tennessee. And check out, they didn't even check my license. You know, we go, go through things that white people don't go through. You know what I'm saying? And we can understand it. But see, right now, I know the Lord is with the ICBK. The ICBK as a whole, what is on the horizon for, for the group? Well, it's a lot. It's a lot on the horizon because we're going to try to, we got to get our people. The way we stood out here today, we doing this in so many other cities, so many other um, countries. We're doing this. We're doing this. This is like what priests do. See, we've been destroyed by through Christianity. Think preacher goes in the church and say, hey, this and that and this. No, this is what true priests do. You know what I'm saying? And well, what you saw today, you saw a whole lot of love. These brothers drove all these miles to come up here and help us with our camp. We trying to wake our people up because they love their people. So it, that's the spirit in the ICBK of really loving your people. So it's a shame that they will call us a hate group because what are we doing to show so much hate? We're not spreading hate, we're spreading love to our people. They calling us a hate group because really they truly hate us. Seems crazy, seems foolish, but through this, kingdom's gonna fall. Through this, America's gonna fall. You know, why? Because the Lord is with us. These are men who harbour anger at society. But it is anger that has been constructed through centuries of racial oppression. This is a fight for justice channeled into oftentimes spiteful preaching rather than protest, and a situation with morals so conflicting that it may not be black and white.